I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Today's guest is a personal friend, and her name is Jen Shipley. If you follow my YouTube channel regularly, you might recognize her because she came on as a guest chef twice for her fabulous recipes, which are in my new book, Own for Health, where she made a watermelon gazpacho, which is always the hit of our potlucks here in the Coachella Valley, and Gila monster sauce, but today she is going to make an exquisite dish that is show-stopping just in time for Thanksgiving. It would also be good for really any holiday, and she's calling it the Celebration Strata Cake. When I first saw the picture, I didn't have my glasses on, and I thought it was a coconut raspberry cake, which when I ate sugar, that was my favorite cake, the white frosting and the, you know, the red raspberries, but upon closer inspection, it was actually cranberry sauce and whipped potatoes. I think the Brussels sprouts that were surrounding it was probably a clue that it wasn't a dessert. If you thought the outside was beautiful, wait till you see the layers on the inside. This is spectacular. You know, Jen is a landscape architect, but now she designs food that it is as beautiful as it is delicious and nutritious. Please welcome her to the show. Thanks for doing this. I've been so excited all week. Oh, me too, AJ. I'm so, uh, so happy to share my little experiment here with you today. Um, you know, I don't know if people know this unless they follow me on Instagram, but sometimes I just post pictures of things I love in my house. And you basically designed my house. I mean, you made the clock out of my grandmother's teacups. You made the wind chime out of the, the cooking utensils that Chef Bravo gave me. I mean, you're just so creative visually. Uh, well, thank you, AJ. It's been fun. And, and, and particularly working with some of the things that you had to display and, you know, uh, arrange in your home. Uh, it was fun. You should have a curio shop. Oh, well, maybe someday. I don't know if these even exist because, you know, when I, when I tried to sell a bunch of antiques before I moved here, they were like, nobody's buying. Like the young kids these days, they're either not interested or they're minimalist. But I, I think uh, it'll be fun. Anyway, I cannot wait to see this. It is so beautiful. And guys, as always, the recipes will be in the show notes on YouTube. So if you're watching on Facebook, that's why I tell you watch on YouTube because that's where we put the recipes after the show. But I want you to pay attention to the to Jen, not the recipe. Here you go. Okay, well, um, for thanks, um, I have always wanted to have something as a big centerpiece. I've been a vegan for many, many years. And, um, you know, the centerpiece at Thanksgiving is always, you know, a, maybe a stuffed, um, a stuffed squash, and I think those are beautiful, but I wanted something different. And so a few years ago, I went on Pinterest and searched for vegan Thanksgiving centerpieces. And I came across uh, something that's very similar in appearance to what I'm making here, um, but it was made, it was vegan, but it was made with fake meat and uh, stuffing and um, covered with mashed pota instant mashed potatoes. And so uh, at this time, if this was a few years ago, I was in your group, AJ, I was already in UWL. And so I was very focused on creating an unprocessed um, vegan celebration cake. And so um, I've experimented with a lot of different layers, creating something that's very colorful and, um, and it's fun. It's a surprise. Um, very different than what I've what I've done before. So these past oh this past month, knowing I was going to do this, I've been experimenting with uh, all the different components. And one of one of the advantages of this, this is really just a presentation method. The recipes, if you have recipes that you like to use for stuffing or squash, sweet potatoes, um, rice, a wild rice stuffing. You can use all of those, and this is just a way to make it much more visually interesting when you put it on the table. So having said that, um, let's start in the fridge. You can make all of these things, and this is one of the great advantages. Um, you know, a few days ahead of time, you can make, you, you can roast a butternut squash, you can make a lentil loaf, you can make your stuffing, and you know, just put everything in the fridge, have it, have it ready to go uh, on maybe a day before Thanksgiving. What I have found with this, you're gonna be molding your layers in a vessel of some sort, and 
then you want about 24 hours for this to uh, chill and set so you can unmold it and then cover it with the mashed potatoes. So, so Jen, is this a dish served warm or cold? Well, you know, it's, it's probably better warm. Um, if, you, if you make this ahead of time, say that what I have in here right now, this is a, a Pampered Chef steamer. And this is what I used for this particular one. Um, all of this is, has been in the fridge and it's chilled. I could warm this up in the, in the microwave um, before unmolding it and then cover it with warm mashed potatoes and serve it warm. Or you can uh, you know, have this ready to go, prepare it, stick it in your fridge, bring it out for Thanksgiving and then cut slices and you know, it, it may be a little awkward, then, then stick those in the microwave, quickly flash them to warm them up. Nice. <gasps> How did you get, in, in, for those of you, uh, the, the picture will be in the show notes afterwards, or it'll be the actual, what they call the thumbnail, but I did post it on Facebook and Instagram. And how did you get the potatoes so white and able to be frosted like, you know, with, like that? It, it was incredible. Well, let's look. Here are my mashed potatoes right here that we're going to, uh, in this episode, I am going to actually frost my, my uh, cake. Uh, these are russet potatoes. This is five pounds of russet potatoes. And uh, I cooked them in the Instant Pot with their peels on. And then as soon as it was done, I let them cool. And then I just rubbed the peels off. Uh, and then I added plant milk to this. I make my own uh, for this using cashews. Uh, I, uh, not, not very many to a cup of water. So maybe a couple of tablespoons of cashews to a cup of water. And I ended up using maybe two and a half cups of cashew milk in with five pounds of the uh, steamed potatoes. And this is, this is the color, uh, nice, and, nice and creamy white. And yeah. There. So, but I have other potatoes as well that are fun to look at that are going to add to the beauty of this uh, cake. All right. Erin is saying, what a beautiful kitchen. And, you know, can you show your refrigerator? Because I remember when I first met you when you lived in Portland, I stayed with you when I was speaking. I guess it must have been the Portland Veg Fest, right? Or it something. Yes. And, and look at that. Look at the organization. Well, do you know, AJ, one of my, this is my inspiration board, right? Um, one of my favorite things in the whole vegan world is how, what gorgeous food we get to eat. And I also love, um, as you say, being prepared. And so I like to open the fridge and, and just have a number of tempting things that I can pull out and make a meal from. So, uh, it's, it's an art project. It's one of my, one of my art projects. It doesn't always, I will say, it doesn't always look like this, but I try. You know, if you want, if there's time, you know, I, we're not, this episode isn't about weight loss, but you are a weight loss, ultimate weight loss success story. If you have any time to tell that story. Well, sure. I'll, I'll tell that very quickly. I, you know, um, I guess I've been a vegan for a long time, but I was, somebody who did eat plenty of the convenience foods, some of the processed foods. I, I was always trying, you know, anybody who knew me thought I ate more healthy than anybody they'd ever heard of. But uh, as I learned more, you know, um, I cut out more and more of those processed foods. And then uh, what I found midlife really was that I had gained, oh, probably 30 pounds. And so um, I, 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 you know, AJ, I met you in 2014 for the first time. You were at a veg fest in Dallas and um, I was there visiting my sister and she said, oh, look, there's a veg fest, let's go to it. And I, I knew who you were at that time. Um, and I went to your presentation and you were doing your, uh, a very energetic, very energetic presentation. I think you even stood on your head um, or did a cartwheel. <laughs> um, but at any rate, uh, from that point, from that point on, I, I didn't, I didn't completely adopt. I, I got your book, got it signed unprocessed. Um, I didn't completely adopt what became, you know, ultimate weight loss, but I followed you. I kind of followed you here and there. 
And then when Ultimate Weight Loss came along, I started uh, getting really interested in that. And uh, once I did that, in, I think I joined in 2017. It was very quick from that point on. Um, I, I quickly dropped the weight. And then it was in 2018 that I went to your conference in Las Vegas and we met uh, again. This time uh, I was much more uh, excited. I was uh, down at my goal weight. And, uh, and so it's, it's, been, it's been a good, uh, a good journey for me. Uh, it, it's definitely harder to, um, to eat out uh, so we don't, <laughs> um, and it scares people when I tell them, uh, when they invite them over for a meal or before COVID anyway, invited them over for a meal and told them, well, it's going to be vegan. It's going to be gluten-free. It's going to be free of salt, oil, and sugar and any kind of processed foods. And, um, they are very nervous about coming home, but I swear Everybody that ends up eating, you know, this beautiful food is just astonished um, that vegan food without salt, oil, and sugar, uh, nothing from a package or a box, can taste so good. So, and, be, and look so beautiful. And look so beautiful. Yes, that's, that's always my joy, is to, is to make the food look gorgeous. So, back to food. Um, I made purple mashed potatoes. Um, these are made with the little, uh, let me grab them out of here. These are the little purple potatoes. Um, and I don't always find them at the store, but when I do, I get them. They cook up beautifully and then you can turn them into mashed potatoes. And, uh, pardon? Oh, I didn't say anything, but I was just thinking, you know, your daughter was on the show. She did a lovely yoga class and it's, it's on this page if people want to enjoy it. She did. Yes. She loves teaching yoga. Um, that was Zoe. And okay. So here are the purple mashed potatoes. I made them very much like I make the white mashed potatoes, maybe a little less, uh, more veggie broth um, and the cooking liquid, which is very purple after you cook these. And um, what I did, um, well, I made these, and then I was talking to my sister-in-law, Brenda, and you know Brenda, too. Um, and she, um, she was saying, oh, I, I wanted to make this, and I looked for um, purple potatoes. She lives up in, uh, outside of Victoria in Canada, and she couldn't find purple potatoes. And they are a beautiful layer inside. Um, so I was trying to think, well, what can you do in place of that? And thought, well, what if you add beets to white potatoes? This is probably um, just a small amount of beets. It doesn't take much mashed up after they're cooked and added into the potatoes. And if you leave little chunks of beets, it's very pretty as well. I added some dill weed to this. Uh, I thought that would, that would be nice, dill with uh, the potatoes uh, and the beets, and it's delicious like that. So those are two potential layers. Now I've only, in, in the strata that I did, I only used uh, the purple potatoes. So another layer. Um, so really you could almost use anything that's, that's firm enough to set up as a layer, right? Exactly. And if you if you have a layer that's not firm enough, like I've made a wild rice layer, uh, stuffing layer, and it's, you know, it, it's crumbly. So uh, when I when I stack them, I'm going to put in the butternut squash, and then I'm going to put in the rice, uh, the rice stuffing, and then another layer of purple, purple potatoes. And when it's sandwiched between those and given some time to chill, it will hold its shape. So this, this is a polenta and cauliflower stuffing. It's the same kind of ingredients you would use in, in a regular stuffing, sage, onions, carrots, celery. But I, I, I made it that way. I'm not gonna use it in this one, but I did use it. Um, I did use it in this, but we're gonna make one in the Instant Pot. Okay. Now here's my butternut squash. I cooked a butternut squash, roasted 
that with um, a kabocha squash. It makes a lot. It makes a lot. And what I've added to this is onion, celery, and sage, fresh sage. And that's all. And probably table tasty in there as well. Um, but that's one of, that's our orange layer. And then this is the wild rice stuffing. And this is um, similar. You have a recipe for wild rice stuffing in your um, book, um, The Secrets to Ultimate Weight Loss. And so I used that as the basis for this. I, um, I didn't have enough stuff, uh, wild rice, so I used a mixture of rice. I have an apple, apple uh, uh, celery, and, um, celery and onions, garlic. And then I used a lot of fresh herbs. Um, I had um, sage, fresh sage, uh, probably these are huge leaves, probably six or seven of these leaves in there. Fresh thyme, fresh rosemary, just chopped them all up and added them in. And um, so as you can see, it's it's kind of a loose layer. So it's, it's gonna be sandwiched between some of these others. So. We're gonna make that, but first, I wanna show you what's in here. Uh, this is my lentil loaf layer. This is gonna be, be the base. The lentil loaf is very heavy, and so it has to create the bottom layer. It's also not the most colorful one, it's dark brown. So. Um, the, the layers that sit above it are going to be much brighter. So here's the lentil loaf. And let's do this. And I'm just going to invert this onto my serving platter. Let's see how this goes. Ah, there. So that's the base. That's the base. And you cook, and so you refrigerated that for 24 hours. I did. I cooked this separately. I cooked this um, well in that pan that I was. Where did I put it? Um, I cooked this in that pan separately. And then the Pampered Chef um, steamer um, works beautifully for this. When I made that strata, the one that I sent you the picture of. I actually made it in the instant pot liner. This is, you know, considerably larger in diameter. Um, but I also have a tart, uh, a tort pan uh, that I made the, the layer cake in, in, or the base in, the lentil loaf. And it's bigger and it works with this. Okay, so. You know, I was thinking my, bean, my beanless bean burger recipe could be a good base too, because I, since I can't have lent legumes, that might work for me. Yes, it would be very good that way. I saw that and I, I was thinking about that. Or a mushroom, a mushroom loaf. How can I do this? <laughs> okay. Um, uh, ideally, you know what I would have done? I would have unmolded this onto here and then flip the whole thing over. But I'm just gonna get brave here. And if I can't get this to come out, I hear it. I hear it. Whoa. Okay. Now, so like that's like, it looks like a Neapolitan cake. Yeah, this was one of my uh, experiments where I thought maybe I could put cranberry sauce between the layers and that would make it, you know, add even more uh, color in there. But um, I think that it probably, what happens is the, the cranberry kind of oozes out and you can see it around the edge here. Now, when we're cut, when we cut into this, it's going to be much more colorful than it is at the sides here. So, so go, so point to each layer and say it is. Okay. So <laughs> It, it's hard to tell because I used a different recipe than what I'm going to be using here. But this is our lentil loaf. And then this is a the polenta. Uh, I don't have that separately. But this is a polenta stuffing, the purple sweet, uh, the purple potatoes. And then this is a squash layer uh, where I added in a lot of herbs and other things. Um, what I realized after making this was it didn't have 
as much bright color as I would like. So for this next one, we're going to be using more colorful um, layers. You know what's incredible is that's your meal and then you just need like a salad or a green vegetable. You don't need to have a gazillion courses, just that and a green. Yes, and I will tell you that this is a lot of food. This is an awful lot of food. And you know, you think, well, you know, how many will this serve? Maybe four. But no, I guarantee you this will probably this will probably serve at least the bigger one that I made um, served, I would say it could probably serve a dozen people. Even those of us who, who are used to eating lots of starch. I mean, this is five pounds of mashed potatoes that's gonna go on the outside. And then there are the pounds of potatoes inside plus the pounds of butternut squash and the, and the lentil loaf. So it's, 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 this is heavy. This is really heavy. It's a lot of food. And even if you uh, are just having a small celebration, um, I, I really recommend uh, making this and then cutting the slices, cut it into slices and lay, putting those in the freezer. And um, then once they're frozen, package them up and serve, the, you know, have them individually. That is, this is what I've been doing with all my experiments here. I've been eating this celebration cake for weeks uh, one slice at a time, it freezes beautifully. Not with the cranberry sauce, uh, without the cranberry sauce, but uh, it thaws nicely in the microwave uh, when you're ready to eat. So here's, here's the base, here's the base. And what I'm gonna do now is um, slather, on, slather on the mashed potatoes. This goes really quite quickly. Um, I start just, Layering it on. Now, if you don't have this chilled, these things, you know, it'll fall apart. And if you were doing a cake, and it's been many years since I've actually done a cake, you know, this is kind of your crumb layer, right? <laughs> and if I were being really fastidious, I'd probably have some wax paper sitting under the edge of this so that when I'm done, I can just, you know, have a nice clean base but I can always wipe it off. Now I've got five pounds of mashed potatoes and you know, everybody loves the mashed potatoes at Thanksgiving. So I wanna make sure that I add not just a skinny little amount on the edges, but a whole, whole bunch. Make a nice thick layer here on the outside. And you know what's cool about this is it's not going to heat up your whole house. Like when you think when you go to people's house that are cooking a turkey, that's been in the oven all day. And, you know, this, like you say, you can make every layer in advance, a day or two even, and then just assemble it on the day. And then you have time to actually enjoy the holiday. Exactly. And you can make mashed potatoes ahead of time. These, you know, this whole thing is, is just, you're going to make this food anyway. You know, like I say, this is, um, this is a presentation method for everything they're already going to make. So um, people can use all their own recipes if they want. Uh, I've sent along what I've used for this. Um, there we go. That's looking good. And I'm just going to put a thin layer on the top here uh, because then I'm going to put the rest, not the rest of this, but a good portion of this into the piping bag and pipe rosettes around the edge. I, you know, you don't have to do that, but I think it adds a nice touch. And um, it just definitely says cake a whole lot more than this. All right. Yeah, just neaten this up a little bit with a wipe around the outside. It really does look like vanilla frosting. Doesn't it? Yeah. No, I just, I really, I really like how this ends up looking. It, it, uh, it does look like a celebration. Okay. Now, how would um, it look with the orange sweet potatoes, you think, is frosting? Or are those too mushy? No, you know, that would work. It, have, it would have the 
same consistency. I was even thinking you could use, uh, you could pipe, you know, with the, with the pink ones. Uh, I could put them in a frosting bag and, and pipe around, um, or the purple ones, either way. Um, this is what I'm using. It's a, uh, the Cuisinart 13 piece decorating set. Uh, it has the pastry bag and I'm just gonna use a big tip. My potatoes um, are somewhat rustic. They're not, I didn't rice them. They are um, just mashed and whipped with a mixer. So, so they end up having uh, some chunks in them. And that's the only problem with, with piping them then is that sometimes some of the chunks get stuck in the nozzle. So I'm gonna use one of the big nozzles here. I wish I could taste this. It looks amazing. Valeria saying it's a starchivore feast. It sure is. It is. I am wondering. I miss these here. You know, I'm teaching a cooking class for the the 12 day McDougal program. It's 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 a program people you know that, that they enroll in. I'm doing the holiday class, and if I had no, I can't change my menu because it's tomorrow, and I've already done my shopping. But man, that 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 this would have blown their minds. Oh, well, this this is definitely a fun uh, a fun Thanksgiving treat, and I think it I think um, well, I think it looks a whole lot better than something big and brown and. <laughs> Yeah, I know car carnivorous food is so ugly. It's just brown. I mean, oh. There's nothing pretty about dead animals. No, I agree with you there. Now I'm just going to stuff or put, you know, a couple uh, scoops of the potatoes in there. Maybe more than that. Squeeze that down. Now, if you don't have something like this, I mean, I, I, I just recently got this. Um, you can use a, just a plastic you know, a baggie that you've cut the corner out of to pipe. These aren't going to be, this isn't, this isn't going to be anything particularly fancy as, in terms of the, the decorate, the style of the nozzle. Um, but now I just make rosettes, squeeze it out like that and come around and squeeze it. I may have to come back and fix up the sides a little bit. And each one of these rosettes, that's probably about the size if you were sl slicing so that each person gets a rosette. Um, that's probably a good indication of how many this will serve. Now I'm getting some stuck in the nozzle there. There we go. And one more. And then I come back and fix these up. There. Now, the sides can definitely use a little bit of touch up here. And I would, yeah, I'm gonna do that right now. I do want this to look really pretty when we when we slice into it. And it's going to be it's this is a bit of a mystery cake because I had this in the freezer. I would recommend against that. I, I think you can make all the components ahead of time and chill this, but I wouldn't put the whole thing like I had in the in the uh, steamer uh, basket or container. I wouldn't put the whole thing in the freezer. I, I, I think the fridge is, is fine, but not freeze because what happens is everything, um, some of the water comes out. And when you thaw it, it's, it's watery, a little bit of watery. And particularly since I used cranberries, cranberry sauce in this, um, it'll be a mystery when we open this up to see what these layers look like. Just gonna wipe the edges here. Wow. Uh, looking better. Now, I have Brussels sprouts already cooked. 
Did I bring them out? Yes. So it's truly a I just can't, I'm just blown away that the potatoes can can be piped like that. I never knew. Yeah. Well, you know, if you look at meat recipes, I've seen meat cupcakes where they make like meatloaf in little cupcake tins and then pipe uh, mashed potatoes on top. I, you know, I wish I could give credit to the person where I, who I got this idea from initially. Um, I have looked again and again uh, at using every kind of search parameter I can to see if I can find that vegan Thanksgiving cake. And I've not been able to, but I found all sorts of, of uh, meat cakes instead. Now, the final, the topping for this then is your cranberry sauce. Um, I made this, I've given the recipe. This is made with um, orange juice, fresh cranberries, orange juice, uh, frozen cherries, and an apple. The apple gives pectin to help everything set. Uh, boiled just until the berries pop and then blended, blended in the food processor. Okay, here we go. This is mind blowing. I, I just, I just, I, can you bring, you know, we don't live that far from each other. Can you bring some over? Yeah, yeah. You know what? I've got plenty of this. I am happy. You're usually the one sending me home with, with food. I'm oh. happy to send, send you home with some of this. Okay. So, I mean, and you can see this really didn't take too long. If you were doing this on Thanksgiving, you had everything already ready. You could just throw this together like this. Oh, one thing I like to do too. Um, the Brussels sprouts, these have just been steamed, but um, you could season them up maybe with some, um, the way you like to, with some vinegars. Mm -hmm. Look so at I bet you're going to put a few fresh cranberries in each rose, right? <laughs> oh, that would be an idea. That would be an idea. I'm using these pomegranate arrows to just kind of, um, you know, add a little bit more color into the piece there. And you could, you could probably put, put pomegranates onto the, or you could, if you had cranberries, you could put a cranberry on there. There we go. I like that. Oh, okay. Now for the moment of truth, uh, we're gonna see what this looks like when we slice into it. How many people have actually tried this so far? Not the one you just made, but I know you made one before, right? I have. I made this for Thanksgiving for all of us, um, oh, three or four years ago, but I first found out about it. You and waited this long to tell me about it? Oh, my God. What other secrets are you keeping for delicious recipes? <laughs> you know, I will tell you, AJ, I kind of forgot about this. Um, you know, and we often, when we, before we lived down here, um, we would go to a friend's house for Thanksgiving. And so I would just bring a side dish uh, then. Uh, so I, the, the, the last time I made this, we had actually come down here uh, to, well, to visit our daughter and her family in LA. And we had uh, our other daughter, Zoe, came and joined us. So we had a big group of just us. And everybody knows if, they're, if I'm cooking Thanksgiving, I'm gonna be, it's gonna be a vegan Thanksgiving. So, um, I haven't made this since then because it ha we haven't had the opportunity, really. Yeah. I have so, so Georgia says, I'm a baker. I decorate cakes. This is such a great, creative, original, healthy idea. I love it. Imagine what else can be done. Oh, you know what? If I were a baker and I knew how to do these, you know, to, I bet somebody who has that skill could really do a number making this gorgeous. I just, you know, as you can see, I just did a very elementary um, squeeze on this and, it, and nevertheless it still ended up it still ends up looking pretty nice so here's the moment of truth let's slice into this okay and let's say let's say one serving here one one rosette you know it's nice it's like you don't have to figure out how much of each thing to take it's all right there in the slice Yes, and, and uh, hopefully everybody who's eating is going to um, like all the different elements. 
Gina says, so festive, it looks delicious. Everyone's saying they can't wait for you to slice it. Guys, if you really think it's incredible, share it. You know, there's a thing called a share button and it's on YouTube and it's on Facebook. And that really helps uh, YouTube recommend this broadcast for other people to find out more about healthy eating. And you know, it just shows you don't have to go to culinary school or be a chef to make healthy, delicious food. And by the way, this is completely SOS free, free of sugar, oil, and salt. Comments looks delicious. Yep, it does. There we go. It ended up, I think, I think those layers ended up looking just fine. Now, as you can see, you wouldn't know that I had cranberry sauce in between these layers when I, when I prepared it because it, you know, all the, um, it must have seeped into the layers below it. But that's, that is what it would look like. Now, I serve this with um, a mushroom gravy and I've included the recipe for the mushroom gravy. You, I know you have some mushroom gravy recipes as well. Um, and uh, so anyway, that's, that's how this ends up looking. Uh, now I'm gonna have a whole lot of this that's gonna end up in the freezer or maybe over at your place, AJ. Right. And, and so, you know, I mean, you could always have, you know, if people didn't want mushroom gravy, you could have a little more cranberry relish on the side or whatever, you know, they could customize yeah. it, you know. Absolutely. I have these little, I have these, these little cups for serving extra cranberry relish. It ends up making it just really beautiful. Now, this was in the smaller container. I'm going to use... Uh, what we have here to layer these things into uh, the, just to show you how it works, how I would do it in the Instant Pot. This will make the one that's even bigger than, than this. Um, and, you know, trying to figure out what to use as a mold, um, if you don't have an Instant Pot, um, look at your pans, look at your cookware and just eat. You know what I was thinking you could do, Jen, is like I, you know, when I used to bake at the restaurant, you know, as a pastry chef for five years, I would do a triple layer German chocolate cake. So I have like three eight inch silicone pans. You could almost just do one in each layer. Then they would be exactly the same size when you, when you unmold them. Exactly. You could, you could do this in cake pans. Um, I, uh, also have a tart pan, tort pan, you know, with removable sides and um, you could, it's a tall, deep one. So you could make a couple layers in that and then invert it onto uh, of the plate and put a few more layers in and chill those. Um, I also, well, right now I can show you this, but I also thought that one thing you could do is make individual servings. This, uh, these are, these are, were a gift from you, Stackable Gourmet. Um, this, you could do the individual serve. It, it probably, by the time you added the mashed potatoes, would serve two people. Do it in something like this. But if you don't have that, this is one of those containers that you would get pico de gallo or um, sunflower seeds in at the store. Just cut the bottom off turn it upside down, put it on a plate, create your layers. And we can do that. So you can see how that would look. Take this off, then frost it. And you would have just a small, you know, individual serving. And yeah, that, that's what I'm going to do tomorrow in the McDougal class is make, and that recipe is in my book, the holiday sweet potato stacks, which only have three or, you know, about three layers. So it's, but, but you're right that, that it is a little bit more labor intensive to do individual, depending on how many people are at the dinner. Right. Right. Um, and it, it could be a way, I don't know, this could be a way if you, you know, if you wanted to freeze as well, uh, if you don't add the cranberry sauce to it. So, so you'll serve that. And what will you be serving for dessert for Thanksgiving dinner? My, my, my new ultimate pumpkin pie recipe, since you're the yeah, only one in the world that has it other than me. I'm serving that. that. That was fantastic, AJ. Yeah. And when are you doing that webinar? Yeah, that's December 5th. You don't have the piece to show people. Did you eat it already? 
Yes, I ate that. That's gone. Maybe I can, maybe I can text Charles and get him in here to show it. So I I created I wanted something really special for the people that are taking the McDougal program that wasn't in any of my books. So I created this new recipe called the ultimate pumpkin pie. And the reason it's ultimate is because I don't like pie, never liked pie, even when I was obese and ate nothing but candies, cakes, cookies, and ice cream, just never was a pie eater because it was too, too fruity and it wasn't sweet like cake and candy. And I also never liked pumpkin. And I married a guy who loves pumpkin and he loves pie. And it's like, I feel bad for him after 25 years that I've never been able to give him what he needed, you know? And so I took the challenge and this pie is amazing because it's frosted, it's double layer, it's it's for people that don't like pumpkin or don't like pie. And I tried to minimize the dates as much as possible. So there's literally, depending if you get 12 slices or 16, a half an ounce to three fourths of an ounce of dates per person. So it's just, I don't know, it's just incredible. So if you guys want that recipe, you can take my Chibo class on December 5th, but Jen has it because she was the recipe tester for it. And I always got to have one person tell me how good it is, but regular people are liking it too. You know, even people that don't eat healthy or vegan, if there's something about it, I don't know what it is. Yeah, no, it's it's delicious. You need to you, you need to watch this webinar because uh, that that is something you'll want to serve. I hadn't even I tell you what, AJ, I hadn't even thought about dessert. I've been so focused on on uh, creating this, and then I would probably uh, have a side salad. So this is a lot of food um, as it is. So. Zena says, can you spin the cake around? I'm not sure what she means, but maybe oh, she just. So that they can see, I don't know, the spin it around, I bet, so that they can see what it looks like inside here. Is that what you wanted, Zena? Maybe see? she'll see. Stephanie says, do you find that it easily comes out of whatever mold you use without falling apart? Would it help to line with parchment paper that hangs over the top of the mold a few inches to help pull it out? Absolutely. And I will, I will say that I had parchment paper in, in my container here. Um, and um, I wanted to see how this would unmold. Uh, so I did a test before the show and, and it came off. And then I just pulled the parchment off because it was obviously a solid mass, the, the um, strata. So I didn't think I would need it. But when I make this, when I create the layers, this is what I do. I line whatever container I'm going to use with parchment. And I don't, you know, it's not, it doesn't need to be particularly, you know, uh, perfect in, in the way it's lined. It will come out. There's so much weight. This is so many pounds of food that this, when you turn it upside down, it will, the weight will pull, pull things out. So if I were starting from scratch and making this, my bottom layer, um, this is what's gonna be on the top, this, this layer at the very top. Um, I would start with my, my squash layer here. And depending, this, this is a huge amount of squash, um, but I just- Your friend is on, Kathy says, looks beautiful, Jen. You're making your Portland friends so proud, we miss you. Portland's loss, is the desert's gain. Oh, I I love my my Portland group, and you know what my plan is next summer um, is to be up there. We had hoped to be able to go up there this year, but then with COVID, that canceled a lot of people's travel plans. But I'm I'm looking forward to reconnecting with everybody up there. And as all of you know, anytime you want, once the travel bans have been lifted in a way, you're welcome to come down here and. Join me in the desert. Okay, so this is this really is going to eat up all of this squash. I just spoon it in, and then you want to smooth it out so that when you create these layers, uh, when it, when you cut into it, you have a nice clean layer. I don't know. I you know we might be able to unmold this and just cut through it and see what it looks like without showing it. But I think you get the idea from this other one. Okay. So And, and uh, you know, you're the one that made, well, actually I don't have it right now on the leftover pie, but you made my pie even prettier by telling me to put pomegranate seeds on <laughs> tomorrow, which is what I'm gonna do. Just wanna show you guys 
this is the ultimate pumpkin pie. And what's really cool about this is I don't measure my food or count calories, but every now and then I put it into this little app because people think, oh, it must be fattening. It's like 250 calories for this huge slice, less calories than two tablespoons of olive oil. It's crazy. Look at this. If you want the recipe, sign up for my class on December 5th. Or take the McDougal program, which is already in progress. Okay, now here's the, here's the uh, wild rice stuffing. As you can see, it's very loose. It's very loose. Um, but if you were to, you know, you put this in on top of the butternut squash and press it down. Oh, goodness. I'm going to be eating this for five years. I'm going to make so much. I'm going to have a freezer full. I'm going to show you how I'm going to how how you can slice this up for the freezer. I don't know that I'll put much more than this in here. Have this like that. Now, uh, layer of purple potatoes. These have been chilled, so they've kind of solidified. Um, but you can spread them out. You know, I bet if you were to just flash them quickly in the microwave, you would you would get something that's a little bit more spreadable. Or just mash them in the bowl here like this. There we go. Now this is probably a pound of the purple potatoes. Um, so there we go. This this is massive. AJ, you you really would would eat this if I brought this over? Um. Well, yeah. <laughs> Why not? It looks delicious. Yeah. No, it, it is it is delicious. I'm just trying to think, oh my goodness, look at all this food I'm making. Now, normally in the past, I've just made it with the three layers and then on top of the lentil loaf. And I don't have a lentil loaf to put on this because that's not what I would, what I would do um, in this. I wouldn't put it in here until the very end. So here then are the purple potatoes, the pink potatoes to go on top of the purple potatoes. You know, I could save a portion of this back. I was gonna show what it would look like if we did it in here. Um, and I think I will. I think I'll save that back and do another, another little strata so we can see how these look. I have some, um, where is it in here? Oh. Okay, this is a lentil loaf that I made that kind of is more crumbly. So I saved this actually. Yeah, for, you can skip the lentil loaf if you're giving it to me, but you know. Oh, okay. Okay, that's that's right. I could because this doesn't have this doesn't have anything in it that um, that you wouldn't eat. But I'm gonna do this separately. This is something else. I wanted to show what you can do um, if you're if you don't have if you don't have one of these stackable gourmets and you want to use just a container like this, because it really does end up looking beautiful. You know, people are asking about how to get the pie recipe. And unless you're in the McDougal program, the only way you can get it is if you take my class on December 5th. I'm starting to work with Chivo, which is a really cool online platform because you don't just watch me cook. We all cook the whole meal together, which is what we're going to be doing on Thanksgiving Day, by the way. But you'll have to be on my mailing list or you won't get the ingredients. So they we have seven of the best SOS free chefs lined up and they're going to cook an entire Thanksgiving meal course by course. And if you're on my mailing list, we're going to send out the shopping list, the, the only ingredient list the week before, and you can just cook the meal with us. It's spectacular. We're doing everything from soup to dessert. We've got Chef Ramses Bravo and Elspeth Feldman from the Speedy Vegan, Tammy Kramer from Nutmeg Notebook, Chef Carol Levy from the JCC in Manhattan, uh, the whole Scott family, Shada Soleimani from Healthy Cooking with Shada. 
and Katie May. So it's going to be spectacular. And the idea is to cook along with us. Oh, that sounds fun. Okay, so in this one, I put lentil loaf and then the wild rice stuffing. And now I'm going to put some of the pink potatoes on here. And, you know, I really do think this would serve too. I tested this amount out yesterday to see, to see if this would be a, an individual serving. And even without an outside layer of mashed potatoes on it, I could only eat about half of this. Okay, there's that. And I think that's all I'm gonna do on this one. I, if I had left over um, squash, I would have put that on here to show. And then this just lifts off. And you have that, which is beautiful, just like that, but then, you know, this hasn't chilled, so it might not take the purple potato, uh, the, um, it might not take the, the um, frosting of the potatoes, but what you can do then is still add your top layer of mashed potatoes to this. This is just so fun. You're really playing with your food and decorating it. So people keep asking served hot or cold, or maybe it's just served at room temperature. It could be served at room temperature uh, or yeah. I mean, it, I think everybody kind of likes their Thanksgiving meal to be warm at least. Just don't get how you got your potatoes so creamy. Maybe you come back and just do a mashed potato episode. Mine have never been that creamy. Really? Well, this is just, um, I used a potato masher you know, and then I, then I used my hand mixer and. Oh, so you whipped them. So you, you cooked them in the instant pot with the skin on organic russets, and then you took the skin off. And then I took the skin off. I cooked them. I cut the whole potato in half um, with the skin on. I put them uh, in a steamer basket in the instant pot with one cup of water, uh, set it for seven minutes and then let it come down naturally. Let the steam come down. And then uh, while they, then I took the lid off and under, it's really quite quick, very quick to just rub the skin off then. Uh, if, it, if they're too hot to handle, you can do it under cold running water and that really helps. But it just, you know, the skin, you realize how much you lose when you peel the potato because it's just a paper thin layer of skin that comes off when you do it this way. Helen says she doesn't have a microwave. How would you recommend warming? I, I don't have a clue. Oh yeah, you can do it in the oven. I've done ah. it. You can just, you can put this whole thing in. I, if I were going to do that, if I wanted to warm this up, um, oh, okay. Well, uh, <laughs> that happens. And then, okay, then this gets its little top layer of cranberry sauce as well. Maybe not as beautiful as, as the other, but um, that would be, that would be very easy. You could, something this size, you could put in your air fryer if you have an air fryer, you know, to warm it up or the oven. Um, yeah. So, um, there was another idea that I had for what I could decorate my cake with. And I wanted to see, I wanted to see if this would work. Did I pull out the asparagus? You see it? Yes. I have some asparagus that I steamed. And I thought this would be kind of fun. It takes away from the idea that this is kind of a cake, but how tall would this be? I think I would cut these down. Cut these down a little bit. I bet I bet the leftovers would be good reheated in the air fryer because then we get a little crunchy. Yeah. And there's that people are saying, how long temperature would you recommend to rewarm? I don't know. I just throw everything in the air fryer, 20 minutes for 400, boom, done. Yeah. Um, you know, in the oven, if you have, if you have, a, because of the size of this, if you wanted to put the whole thing in, if you have a thermometer uh, that goes into the, you know, that you can stick in and it measures it on your oven, uh, and I think an internal temperature of 110 is kind of the, the lower one that would be, would be recommended. Um, 
And I don't know how long it, that would take at 350, 350 or 400. Uh, this is one thing I was thinking of doing was just decorating the outside of this. With asparagus? Asparagus for something different. You know, it, it takes away from the I'm a cake illusion, but you know, for what? This is incredible. I mean, I've never seen, you know, I've, I, you know, I, I have famous chefs on, but I've never seen anything like this. You've blown me away, mind blown officially. Well, very good. That uh, that's makes me very happy. And you were so nervous. You had a dream that, that I think, that, yeah, I knew I knew this would go well. Oh uh, yeah, I had I had a dream that my sink was full to here with dirty dishes, and that I was in my nightgown and I had overslept. And I thought, oh no, oh no, oh no. Well, maybe everybody will understand. That's what I was trying to tell myself. Maybe everybody will understand. Mm -hmm. All had. Thanksgiving preparations where they've had a sink full of dishes and <laughs> in getting things ready for this. Um, I, have I know what it's like because I have performance anxiety and I get nervous. But the nice thing about Zoom is like if you really get too scared, you can just close your computer. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, so this this is very heavy and this doesn't even have if, if you were doing this whole thing, the lentil loaf layer on it. Um, I mean, this is already, you can see the height. Um, I'm, I'm about up to here in, in this. So this, even, even without a lentil loaf layer in this would be um, substantial. And then I was going to put, I was gonna put the, these potatoes on. Uh, I think I won't put this on um, at all because it, it's a little bit watery. This is a polenta and cauliflower stuffing. Um, I used uh, just, a coarse cornmeal, cooked that up in veggie broth. I didn't include the recipe in this because honestly, it's kind of still on a testing stage and I'm not particularly um, happy with the results. But um, I think anybody making this, if they have their favorite you know, cornbread stuffing, um, they could use something like that uh, instead of the wild rice. I think, I think the possibilities and the combinations are endless and people can just do what they want. I mean, it can be any, anything really. Yeah. Oh, I think so. I, but I, I just love that we get to work with such colorful food, you know? Yeah. And I know you go to most Thanksgiving dinners, they get the white Turkey, the Brown graving, the Brown stuffing. It's ugly. Yeah. It's all Brown. It's all Brown and, and white and yes, smothered in, in gravy. I mean, I have my mushroom gravy is Brown. Uh, <laughs> Um, this even needs gravy though. Like I would, if I was eating this, I would think it would just maybe need a little more cranberry sauce, but I don't think it even needs gravy. You know, um, it doesn't necessarily, I make a gravy, um, I have a jar of it here. Um, I haven't used mushrooms in any of the rest of this. And I usually like to have mushrooms with my meal in some way. So this is a mushroom gravy. Um, it's not a creamy one. It's, it's one that I've made with um, broth and uh, then I used arrowroot to thicken it. Um, and that just gives you a nice clear kind of uh, brothy gravy that um, my, my creamy gravy ended up looking kind of gray. <laughs> So I, I, I didn't think that that added visually to the meal. So yeah. Zena said, would you warm the whole thing up at once or would you do it piece by piece? Because, you know, because you're also then warming the cranberry sauce up. Right. If you were doing, if you were going to warm this up, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put the cranberry sauce on until the very end. You know, after the whole thing's warmed, then I would put the cranberry sauce on. But, you know, honestly, if you have a microwave and if it's not too, oh, um, cumbersome to do so, probably the best thing to do would be to slice it at the table, you know, let everybody have their slice and then flash it a minute, a minute in the microwave. Uh, if this isn't frozen, you know, a minute in the microwave is more than enough to heat this. And, um, you know, that I think that the big drawback for me is the whole, you know, serving, heating, uh, trying to find the ideal way to do it so that you can have a hot meal um, without, you know, bring this to the table hot and, and then let everybody enjoy. 
All right. Well, thank you so much. This has been just a spectacular presentation. I really appreciate it. And I cannot waste to take, wait to taste it. Well, thank you, AJ. I'm, I'm, glad, uh, I'm glad it meets with your approval. Oh, my God. So one more question. Anne says, could you put the Instant Pot liner in the oven, do you think? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I do that. I did that. I, um, I, I have a, had a probe. I covered it. Uh, I covered the, um, the strata with foil because I didn't really want it to brown. And then I put the temperature probe in the middle of it because I had no idea how long it would take from chilled, you know, to get it warm. And I think at 350, um, it finally hit 110 after about 45 minutes. And um, that's kind of what I remember. So you don't want it to, I didn't want it to overcook, you know, um, but uh, at any rate, I think that would, that would do it. You could do that. I, if I were doing that, I, I would do it like that, unmold it, and then put the potatoes on. They go very quickly. The potatoes, putting the potatoes on goes very quickly. So your loaf um, would not cool down much uh, doing it that way. Nice. Kathy says, such a great comprehensive video showing all the steps. Thanks so much. Thomas Allen says, a beautiful presentation. And Thomas, you know, thank you very much, Thomas Allen, by the way, who is not only one of the world's best stand-up comedians, but the owner of California Balsamic, who generously gives every guest on this show that lives in the United States two bottles of his famous balsamic vinegar. And Jen apparently just ran out today, so this is perfect timing. It is. Well, I have other bottles of it. I have other bottles, but Cal's favorite, which was the uh, smoke tickery. Uh, he ran out of that last night. Well, good. So we'll get, we'll get some bottles to you soon. And you might want to try his newest flavor, uh, the pumpkin pie spice too. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Well, thank you, Thomas. Thank you for sponsoring this. I yep, absolutely. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back in two hours when we have the chef from Mama Says, Carolyn Folly, who's going to make pot pies, vegan pot pie, which are also beautiful for the holidays. Thanks again, Jen. I hope to see you soon. Yes, thank you, AJ. <laughs>